Hi everyone, it's Paul from Orlando Bonsai and I'm still recovering from last week's convention here in Orlando. It was outstanding. Um, we, uh, we really had a great time. I bought so many things. I've got so much work to do this week and I'm still so far behind. So this week's video is going to be a little bit different as far as we're going to just do a lot of work. Uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of instructional videos over the past, you know, three or four months right now. And I think you guys are, you know, starting to, to grasp the basics. So now we're going to put some of those, uh, you know, those theories into actual practices today because I've got a lot of work to do. I, I picked up a tree, I picked up a new bonsai pot, and there's an air layer that I need to uh, separate today's too. So a little bit, a lot of work today. So just going to come watch, watch over my shoulder as we take care of some of the things that I definitely need to get caught up on. One of the things uh, that I get asked a lot is how often are you supposed to repot a tree? Um, this uh, is my Radio Religiosa and it is root bound. Root bound is what means is the roots of they're so dense and so full that it's actually lifting the tree up out of the pot. This when I planted it was on the soil line. You know the, the, the base of the tree was at the soil line of the pot but you can see how high up it's lifted. The, the pot that I selected for this at the time was totally the wrong shape, totally the wrong uh, color. So I had a, uh, a friend of mine, his name is Rob Abnesio and he's with Tyken Earth and uh, he's a, he, he does pottery for, for bone size. And I had talked to him about a month or maybe a couple months ago, asking him to design a pot specifically for this tree because I've, I've been searching. I mean, this is probably about the fourth pot that I've tried for this tree, and it just wasn't working out. What I've got is a very rounded uh, tree, uh, you know, the flowering tree, very, you know, kind of a feminine look to it. And then I'm putting it in a rectangular pot with a lot of angles and blue, which doesn't really do anything for this. So what he did was he designed this pot for me. A lot shallower. It's a nice oval with nice shapes. Uh, and actually, you can see that I've already uh, did the pre-wiring for this pot too, as well. But it's got a nice little um, uh, ash that he added over here, which is the same color as the flowers. The color is the base of the of the the bark of the tree, so the the two together should work very very well. My biggest concerns, of course, are. Uh, this thing is lifted out of the pot so high and I've got roots that are probably growing out and then down. And what I need for this pot is to grow straight out from the, from the, uh, the, the base of the trunk. So, you know, a little bit of worried. I'm hoping these trunk, these, these roots aren't that thick, still have a little bit of flexibility, but once I get them flattened out and opened up, I'm hoping it's going to sit in here. There's definitely going to be a lot of reduction from the roots that are on this tree. Uh, that's why I'm outside today, because I know this is going to be a mess taking this thing out, re you know, raking these roots out. But, um, Am I worried about getting it into this pot? Absolutely. Am I going to get it into this pot? No doubt about it. It is going to be in this pot and it's going to be outstanding. Uh, the colors are just going to be amazing. And when this thing is done, this is the instant kind of gratification that you look forward to. It's just like changing a frame on a, on a painting. It's just, it brings out different colors. It brings out different textures that you don't see. You know, this blue is so contrasting that it actually draws your eye towards the blue that you don't really notice the tree. This is going to be so complimentary that it's going to work with the bark. It's going to be, your eyes going to travel from the pot all the way up to the tree and then back down. It's, it's not like it's going to be interrupted. So this is going to be very exciting for me and I'm sure it will be for you. After I do this, I did pick up a nice uh, ficus microcarpa that I'm going to repot and then we're also going to separate the, uh, the air layer that I did you know, about a month ago on the Brazilian rain tree just needs to occur right now. So I'm gonna take care of everything in this video, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a lot of fun. The first thing I gotta do before I do anything is get this bonsai pot off of this tree. Wonderful, one of the wonderful things I did was, didn't wire it in, so it's just sitting in the pot. It's got a uh, angled uh, shape to it, so the, the tree should just really just slide right out. And there it is, it's just coming right out for me. Of course, it's gonna grab onto those screens on the bottom, and these are very aggressive roots. So that was a nice easy transition so far. Now it's just a matter of raking out this tight, tight set of roots. I'll talk about healthy. So what I'm going to do is just kind of rake these out and there's going to be a lot of cutting involved. But the nice thing about Radio Religiosa, they have aggressive roots. So I'm not worried about removing a lot of roots on this thing. It's just a matter of getting it separated and I'm going to tear through these because I need to get, need to, get to the actual um, base of the tree so that I can see what kind of roots I have coming out from it. And for this job I'm using just a single uh, root hook. Nice uh, basic design. It can slip between the, uh, the larger roots. And sometimes I would actually collect the soil that's coming off, but um, 
there's so little in this tree right now it's it's amazing so i'm just gonna kind of let it fall and i'll just put a brand new batch of roots in there and again these long roots i'm not really that concerned about because there's not a whole lot of feet of roots on there the ones that i'm concerned about are the ones that are closest to the trunk um, which we'll reduce back to and get it into that pot so a lot of good roots it's actually raking out very nicely i had uh, worked on this the roots of this tree probably about four or five years ago and actually raked everything out so there was no crossing roots on anything it's just a matter of just bringing it back in so my first steps are going to be again to loosen this up not the easiest of jobs right now this is pretty tight in here this has been root bound for the longest time and i've been wanting to repot it uh, but it took a little while for him to make the pot for me and not that it's his fault in any way let's grab a root hook there we go these are the giant uh, root printers joshua roth I'll just use those to remove some of this large mass that we don't really need and again the roots aren't really that that big so they're pretty flexible so this isn't going to be a, that big of a challenge after all the challenge is going to be the height of the uh, the roots because that mass is definitely deeper than the pot is so we're going to have we're going to definitely have to bring in a saw to clean this up but i'm not too concerned with how many roots we're going to take off right now this is all going to go i mean you can see uh for as much roots as i have right there barely any feed of roots in here here's all my feeder roots nice and close to the base of the trunk that's what's that's what's, that's what's supporting the top of this tree this is what's lifting it out this is what's causing the root bound so so when i remove that this tree's not going to slow down one bit i'm going to trim this all off and just discard this this is really no benefit to us whatsoever now one of the good things is the shape of the pot that i have is wider than the pot I'm using right now. So really the only thing I'm concerned about is the depth of getting this into the bonsai pot. I'm not worried about it fitting in, you know, front to back or right to left. Uh, it's definitely gonna fit into that pot. And I'm pretty sure as soon as I get all this wasted energy off and these roots that really did not provide much food source or water intake for the tree, it's gonna be a, an easy fit. I'm actually pretty amazed how um, long these roots are without really putting that much feed of roots. And all I'm going to do is just put a few little cuts in here because I want to promote the roots to split more often. So I'm just going to loosen that up a little bit. And now that I've taken all the long roots off, I'm just going to rake this apart and get it wide open. And it's going to come off with things like this. That's the stuff we want to get rid of because that just takes up space. All we're looking for is nice, tight feeder roots in here. This is such an aggressive root. It's hard to keep it um, condensed. I'm going to take out the big, chunky roots like that. No need for that in there. Again, we just want the small stuff. And these things that are lumpy like this are just lifting it out of the pot to uh, not let it settle into the pot like I really wanted to. I don't need this thing to sit down a good four inches compared to where it was. So by taking these big chunky roots off, it's going to allow that tree to sit in there a lot better. Okay, let's try a little trial fit, see how we're looking. Grab that pot. Okay. Looking pretty good so far. Definitely needs to come down at least two inches. Now, I'm not gonna be able to rake that up because this is such, like I said, it's such an aggressive root. Can't reduce it from the top. I can probably clean it out a little bit so it sits a little bit flatter, but that height needs to come off the bottom of the, off the tree. So only one way to do that, and that's with a saw. All I'm gonna try and do is just do a saw right across the bottom. And don't try this with every kind of material. This works with tropicals such as ficus, you know, there's this uh, Radio Religiosa, which is a jasmine it'll work with. But don't, don't think, because I can do this with some material, that I can do with all material. This is not going to work with your um, 
your elms, especially this time of the year. This is the wrong time to be working on them. Um, so pay attention to the material that you're working on. But for a, for a ficus or jasmine or uh, any other kind of tropical right now, this is the time to work on it. But, you know, know your tree. Okay, this took a little bit more work than I thought I was going to, but uh, but it, uh, but I, I definitely won. So uh, all I'm doing right now is I've uh, I've reduced the wire, or I'm sorry, I reduced the uh, size of the root mass, and now I'm just simply wiring it into the pot. This is not the the method I showed the other one. This is just simply four wires run up through the uh, wiring holes, uh, and then I'm just um, cinching them in uh, just to hold it snugly in the pot. So it uh, so as the roots grow, they're not lifting the tree out of the pot they're just simply just filling in the gaps um, I haven't added really any soil in here yet um, I'm just snugging it down like I said and when I put it in the pot again I didn't put a dead center you know uh, rule of thirds we're not putting any tree dead center of a bonsai pot it uh, just artistically it's not the way to do it you want to make sure that you either go to the left or to the right uh, just to take it off center because you don't want that absolute um, dead center because it takes away from the artistic view of it. Your, your eyes aesthetically find uh, that when the tree's off center it's more aesthetically pleasing and it just makes for a much beautiful or more beautiful tree. So that's why we do what we do. You're now sitting firmly in that pot. Um, it's amazing that we got that tree out of this pot into this and really didn't remove any feeder roots. Um, just amazing. So all I'm doing is taking off the excess wire. My wiring is done below the soil line so you don't see the end results of the wiring that I'm holding it in with. You're trying to hide this. This is, this is a functionality a purpose only. This does not add any, anything pretty to the tree. So uh, hide this as best you can. This one's actually hidden behind the, the main root on the left side so you can't even see it at all. Uh, and again, I'm gonna tuck that into the soil line. Now, what I wanna do um, is give us time to recover from what we went through. I mean, even though that it's, it's going to recover from this, you know, the, removing the roots is not a big deal for this type of tree during this time of the year. I want to give us good watering and put it into the shade for about a week uh, or so, just to give us some time to uh, to establish itself in these in this new soil mix and to give it a chance to start putting some new roots out to to get it stabilized in there. But uh, other than that, tree turned out great, and I think you can agree this has been a, a great improvement on this tree. Okay, finished up the Radio Religiosa, and now we're moving on to a tree that I just bought, which is a ficus microcarpa. I just got it at the, uh, the Orlando Con uh, the BSF uh, convention. It was held in Orlando, Florida. And this one, I'm, all I'm trying to do is get this into a bonsai pot, trying to get it out of the, the bonsai mix. I still have to develop all the branches and work on this tree quite a bit, but uh, to make it more manageable and to make it uh, eye level for myself, I like to get the trees, once the, once the trunk's thickened up, get it into a bonsai pot so I can start working, uh, you know, start examining the shape, trying to choose a front, and all that other fun stuff that goes along with bonsai. So, uh, first thing we're gonna do is just take it out of the nursery pot, and it should come out pretty easy. Oh yeah, no problem. And I certainly don't have to remove as much soil off this as we did the last one. This is just simply just getting it down to a uh, a manageable size and again we don't have a whole lot of feeder roots on this we have nice long stringy roots on this because that's what the type of soil that we have it in which is the nursery mix that's what it promotes so I'm just going to work my way around this thing and just remove the soil uh, from the roots I can't wait to watch this video because I'm probably aging and getting more tan as the uh, video is going on. There's been a lot of work here and I'm probably on the verge of heat stroke. So let's see if we can get this tree into this pot. Um, the last step I did was also just take it to the garden hose, take it to a garden hose and just hose it off just to clean off any of the uh, remaining roots. I'm gonna get rid of any insects that we see. And I'm not worried, really worried about a front. I am again just trying to get this into the bonsai pot so that I can manage it. Uh, in time, if I need to get into a bigger pot, I can, or if I need to uh, uh, change the angle, but I can. But right now, just getting it into the pot. And, and again, we're using bonsai soil on this. We're not using uh, nursery mix anymore. I 
reason for that is uh, I'm not trying to build up a trunk. I'm not trying to get establishing roots. I've already got them. I'm trying now to reduce the size of the roots. Uh, so to do that, I want to get more feeder roots, more condensed. And the best thing for that is putting it into a bonsai soil mix. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work the soil in, give it a good watering, put it on the bench, and then we're last step for today is working on the air layer on the Brazilian Ranger. Okay, so what we did was, as we let this thing grow, we had a lot of foliage up top. The, the leaves on top were to promote the root growing um, at, the, at the air layer. Now that I've got the air layer completed, I want to remove some of the growth up top so that it gives a better chance for the roots to actually be able to sustain the top. I don't want the roots to struggle. I want them to start to develop. Um, and by having a nice balance with the top and bottom of the tree, I'll be able to do that. The bottom, I'm just going to have it, I'll reduce it back in a little bit, but I do want to grow a brand new top on this. So once it's uh, cut apart, I'm not going to do anything else with the bottom. But I'm just going to remove a little bit of the growth on the tips. Definitely want to leave some green on each of the branches because I don't want to kill the branch. This is only to get the uh, tree easier to handle, easier to maintain. I'm not really paying attention very much of where I'm cutting. Uh, I'm just going to try to trim it back to a shape, a basic, you know, maybe, a, a, I don't know, a 12 inch overhang over the pot is all I'm trying to reduce this back to. Uh, in any case, these branches are way too long for any bonsai anyway, so uh, I'm not doing any damage or causing myself any delays by reducing the branches like I am. Um, at, this, at this stage, as soon as the roots are established, which won't take more than a couple of weeks, I can actually start working on this tree and getting into a shape of a of a basic structure of the bonsai. It's not going to uh, be into bonsai soil for uh, probably about a year. I really want to grow the roots long uh, and thick, which uh, gives me good stabilizing roots. I'm not looking to get the feet of roots right now. I want to get the uh, the roots that are going to give me a nice nabari and hold the tree upright. Um, once I get that, then I can start reducing them back and getting it into a, uh, a smaller bonsai pot. This is just going into a nursery mix and into a uh, nursery soil. Use Ryobi. Uh, battery charge is a lot easier on the field. Uh, but you can use a handsaw. Whatever works you know, best for you. And all I'm going to do is just kind of remove the foil. And I'm going to remove it underneath the roots as best I can. Don't want to ruin any of the roots that I've got growing. Got a lot of sap pouring out of this tree too. Now I have two trees. Let's take a look at that. There's some good roots. I'll remove these bottom branches. I left these on just as sacrifice branches to help me thicken up the bottom of the tree. But these ones are low enough that I don't have to worry about it. I just want to get this into, the, into a pot and make sure it stands up right. But it's going to be an outstanding tree. Again, I'm going to reduce this down, get it into the bonsai pot. 